Hi everyone. In today's presentation, I would like to discuss one paper on 2019 CSP.NET, a new backbone that can enhance learning capability of CNN. And I put the link in there. And this is the work from a bunch of folks from Taiwan. And again, this is my personal reading notes. What I want to do is um, to deliver the high level summary of the CSP.NET. So uh, actually, uh, a short disclaimer before we jump right into that, the CSP.NET is basically uh, highly related to the previous work DanceNet. So if you haven't seen my previous video for DanceNet or uh, you haven't read the paper of DanceNet, I will, I will highly recommend that you to, to check the DanceNet before you, have, you, you jump into this video. Otherwise, uh, probably there is a lot of things you don't understand. So the, the problem why CSNet is there is uh, a, this is actually a very engineering paper. So it's trying to solve very uh, industrial problem. So what is industrial problem? Of course, you, are li you have limited resource in terms of computation, in terms of memory resource. So you want to make sure your network is uh, optimized as much as possible. So uh, in the previous another video, a mobile net video, we talk about this depth-wise separ separable convolution, and you can check for that. However, um, there is a drawback of that approach. Uh, depth-wise separable convolution is not that well um, performed inside the ASIC, which is application-specific integrated circuit um, devices. So. Even though they can reduce a lot of computation with the mobile net, uh, this kind of um, uh, convolution approach, however, it is not um, well compatible inside ASIC. So there, there, there must be the other approach that we can we can we can use to put into the edge device for the edge computing device. And that is exactly a proposal for uh, CSP.NET. And actually, a uh, acronym is uh, a cross-stage partial network. So CSP.NET is a computationally efficient components that can enable the different backbones. For example, the ResNet, the ResNext, the DenseNet. And once you apply the CSP.NET into your backbone, you can deliver on both C, uh, CPUs and, and mobile GPUs devices. And that is exactly what we want. We want the, the edge devices that we can really run the applications to be as efficient as possible, to be as fast as possible at the same time. So um, the, the cross-stage partial network, let's jump right into what is that. So the goal is to have a richer uh, gradient combinations while reducing the amount of computation. So um, at, the, at, at one hand, you want to do is you want to be uh, rich in your gradient combinations, which means you can enhance your learning learning capability, exactly what the title of CSP.NET um, is talking about. And on the other hand, you're trying to reduce the amount of computations. And that is exactly the CSP.NET try to optimize um, the previous paper, the DenseNet. So that is why I'm, I mentioned the if you haven't checked this, the DenseNet video, please go go check that. Otherwise, the the, the below pictures you might be a little bit um um blo uh, a little bit no clue what I'm talking about. So how to do that? How to how do we um optimize from the DenseNet? So um the the first thing we can do is par partitioning the feature map of the base layer into two parts and then merge them through a proposed uh cross-stage hierarchy. And later, we will, we will go through this image and we talk about how does that uh, means inside the, the strategy of the architectures. And the second thing is to let the gradient flow propagate through different network path by splitting the gradient flow. This is kind of a, um, um, to add additional uh, gradient flow that you can actually um, the, the do the uh, that propagation, you can make sure the different gradient flows has a different path, can can flow back into the whole network. So the result is the proposed gradient informations can can have a large correlations difference by switching concatenations and transition steps, which means that this is better than the dense net. So what we always trying to do right is to have a large 
um, correlation difference, which we want to have a different um, gradient flows so we can fully leverage those informations. And, and that is uh, one optimization point they want to do better from the CSP net compared to the dense net. So in the left image, you can see this is exactly uh, what we learned from the dense net before. Um, so what dense net is doing, right? You have your feature map input and you pass a uh, convolutional layers and you increase in this um, feature maps. Let's say you increase in depending on this is what we call gross red inside the dense net paper, right? So let's say if the gross red is 12 and the, your input feature maps could be 30, then the final result, you will concatenate them. That will be 30 plus 12. And then you take this 42 feature maps again, you do a con uh, convolutions and your gross rate is again set to 12, right? So then the, the final result 12 will concatenate with the previous um, um, feature maps, which is 42. And now it's 42 plus 12, which is 54. So you can see you have increase in each step 12 because that's exactly your gross rate right is doing and then you have a final result and that result you'll go into a transition layers and what transition layer is doing is if you record inside the dense net papers that is just uh, to make sure that the dimension can be reduced in this case and what happened inside the csp net is actually exactly happening from the beginning so you remember that the first point we say partitioning the feature map into uh, the two parts. And this is exactly talking here. You partitioning this base uh, feature maps into two parts. You can see this X zero here and X, um, yeah, probably you can see uh, harder here. Um, so this is exactly the two parts. So instead of taking the whole base layer into this dense block, right? This, this um, um, co co computation here, this architecture here, we call dense block inside the dense net paper. So instead of taking the original 30 completely inside uh, the dense block, we take just one portion of that. Let's say, let's say we take 10, right? And we left 20. So you take 10 and you do a convolution, you increase in 12. And in this case, you are 22. Instead of a previous, you have 42. So you reduce huge amount of the, you reduce huge amount of feature maps, and you know that um, while the architectures um, of the CNN increasing, the feature, um, the the channel size, the the the, the feature, uh, which the dimension of the channels will increase a lot. So if you can partition in directly at the beginning from the base layers, actually your growth rate compared to the base layer is just uh, pretty minor things, right? Because now I'm using an example of 30. Usually the, 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 the base layer can be like 512, like 1024, right? If it is this huge numbers that you actually avoid to compute this huge numbers because you only take one portion of that into your dense block. And that is called why I call partial dense block because you only take partial of them. And the rest of the computation here is exactly the same as the dense block inside the dense net papers. You just um, have your growth rate here and you do a concatenations with your base layers and you repeat this same process here. Um, so you can see that the majority of the difference is this purple color here because you take only a partial of them. This is smaller compared to the dense net is bigger. And then another thing is this by um, um, mer then merging them through a proposed um, cross stage hierarchy here is exactly you take your previous one, you skip these partials and then you concatenate, you concat them together back to the whole transition layer here. So you take your previous missing parts and you do a concat here. So what does that help is um, you see when you have a bad propagation, you have one path. You can simply directly jump through um, the to, to the original base layer. So you can jump over this dense block. So your 
uh, gradient flow can be more easily to flow floating back to the to the early layers, and that is exactly um, one one benefit of splitting the gradient flow. Okay, so here is just uh, a zoom in pictures that I'm um, showing the difference, exactly the same pictures I, I explained before. Um, this is the difference between the, the dense net and the CSP net, and I, I think now you are able to interpret this um, image by yourself. So the advantage, there's a few advantage of using that, right? The first one is we are keep talking about here is that the, the different gradient flow the enhance the learning capability. So it's enhancing the learning capability. The, the reason why they want to do that, because um, at the beginning we talk about this paper is very engineering papers. If you want to put the rest net, if you want, want to put the dense net into um, the edge device, you need to, you need to make um, this model into a lightweight model. Otherwise, the computational demands and uh, the memory requirements is too high for this edge device. So when whenever you lightweight um, those those different um, CNN the famous CNN architectures, then the result tend to be suboptimal performance. So we we're trying to find a way right to reduce the computational uh, bottleneck. We're also trying to find a way to reduce the the require of the memory, and that is why we apply the CSP net uh, these techniques. So um, the you can see the, the text here, the accuracy of existing CNN is greatly degraded after light weighting, as I said before. So we hope to strengthen CNN learning capability so that it can be maintained sufficient accuracies while being light weighting. And if you take those, um, those famous models after applying the CSP net, on the above mentioned network into those backbones, the computational effort can be reduced from 10% to 20%, but it outperformed the original model in terms of accuracy. So no, when you apply the CSP net, you actually reduce computational efforts, but your performance is increasing. And that is, a, that is the best thing you can have in one architecture, right? So that is why the CSP net is using on the YOLO v4 um, because this is basically what everyone is chasing for to reduce the computational uh, efforts, but also increasing the accuracy at the same time. So there's no trade off. You basically have all the benefits you want. And that is exactly the things we have this partial uh, dense block, right? Because you only take one part, which is part two here, go into the dense block. And that is exactly the previous diagram we walked through. And then you have uh, you have the transitions part you concatenate basically from your previous skip part together. And once you, when you do the back prop, you will have uh, additional gradient flows flow back to the part one directly, and also the other one flow back via the uh, dense block as well. So the advantage, advantage two is removing computational bottleneck. And that is quite intuitive because we are exactly talking about the previous diagram here. Because we skip the huge chunk, the huge part of the, the base layer features. So meaning that if we take this as an example, if it's 1024, and then now if we only take 10 of them, adding the uh, gross ratios 12 so we actually compute the very minimum of the feature maps the channel size here so in the end you probably only com um, compute that that's thing here is 10 I just make up some number here uh, to give you a little bit taste so if this is 10 and every gross rate is 12 so we have 48 years so in total we have um, 58 here and 58 compared to you will have 1024 plus 48 here and that's the difference so in the late the later of your late the architectures um, if you apply this csp net um, the partial dense block right these architectures then you can reduce a huge um, computational bottleneck uh, because if you skip a lot of uh, the the repeat computation here 
and that is very very important so you can see here um yeah just some just some text here reduce 80 percent of computational bottleneck while test the yolo v3 base model okay and advantage three is um the the very important factor as well to reducing the memory cost they 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 did that because they do this uh, cross channel pooling so what is cross channel pooling is the normal pooling is like that right you have your k um, channel size here um, and then when you do the pooling right you just reduce your height and the width but your channel size still meant remains the k number of k right you just reduce the 2d information but the cross channel pooling what it does is it also decreases the channel size. So you can see the final result is uh, smaller than K here in terms of the channel size. Meaning that if you do this cross channel pooling, you can reduce in terms of 3D memory um, needs. So that cut down 75% uh, of memory usage on the pleading pleading net um, this is just one architecture so this is always case by case right it really depends on how you really apply those techniques into your architectures it, to just give a little bit um, of a feeling why it can reduce the memory cost so the final slides of uh, of me today is the performance right so let's have a look on the normal rest next 50 here if you apply the CSP as a backbone, right? You don't do anything, you just apply this technique into that backbone. You can actually reduce the computation um, requirement 22%. And you reduce that 22%, but you're still increasing the performance of the accuracy. And that's exactly what we're saying. If you apply those techniques, that is really a huge benefit, no matter which backbone you have here. So if you have the dense net already, right? The dense net already is a is a very very good on the performance because the CSP net basically is based on the dense net, right? But if you apply the CSP, then in these times you don't increase in the performance, but you still decrease a lot of the computation um, um, needs, which is 20%. So this is how you interpret that uh, these tables that you always want to go left and go up right and if you if you see the um, the the table here goes down is that uh, once you apply the csp net that you can increase a lot of frames per second so usually usually um this is a very engineering um criteria right what you're trying to run on the h devices you want to run as fast as you can so sometimes you, you tell people you can reduce the B flops. Actually, it's not it's not uh, directly convert into the uh, frames per second. If you run some object detections, you you want to have enough frames per second, even though you probably will have very low B flops, but your frames per second it's low, meaning that in the actual computation it, there is a lot of bottleneck there. So in the really uh, final pr um, practical applications what we're trying to achieve is frames per second so after apply the csp net your your problems on on the the real world problems can actually also increase in frames per second and that's a very very important um the achievement from from the csp um, backbone architectures and that is exactly the reason why yolo v4 backbone is is using the csp net as its backbones to increasing uh, what we say first the learning capability second we can reduce the computational bottleneck of um, your architectures because we have this partial um, this partial dense block sections that to reduce a lot of um, the base layer feature maps right and the third thing is we can reduce the cost of the memory usage by this cross um, cross-channel pooling approach and this is a very short summary for for the csp net there is a lot of different techniques also happening inside this um, in this paper i didn't mention so if you're interested you can go check the paper by yourself and basically that's all for today thanks thanks everybody